All right, guys. Thank you so, so much for hopping on this training. I'm really excited to talk to you guys. I mean, I know that you guys have been hearing from so amazing leaders that I look up to. Um, you know, hearing Superstar Diamond Coach, especially for me, it's still kind of crazy because I, I guess I've been a coach for, you know, almost seven and a half years, you guys. And so it took me a long time to get to that point in my business. And I think sometimes, you know, as Diamond and Above leaders, we might get stuck at Diamond or we hit Diamond and then we drop or maybe you get stuck at one star or whatever. And we think, this is it. This is the end of my business and I'm not going to move forward. And we start all this negative talk. And for me, you know, I've had those periods of doubt and setbacks and stuff like that. And I believe that every time we have those setbacks, you guys, it gives us a chance to be able to help other people who have been in those situations. So whether you had a stellar February or you're like, oh my gosh, this is the hardest month ever, um, you just got to refocus, you guys, in March, get yourself um, energized and ready to crush, crush March. And hopefully with my tips, um, going from, you know, stranger to lifer, that you can take this stuff, apply it to your business and start seeing success. Okay. So, um, one of the things that I wanted to do for this is that, you know, I really believe that, let me make sure everything's muted real quick. Cause I'll get distracted hearing sounds. It's like, I'm like a squirrel. Okay. So, um, I really do believe that in this business, the number one thing is that we have to focus on the relationship and creating lifers. If you follow Shalene, she talks about finding your lifers. And coming from someone, me, I was brought up and I'm a natural born people pleaser. And so in this business, maybe you guys are the same way. We have to break that, okay? Because there's gonna be people who come into your life and they leave just as fast as they came in or they unfriend you, or they block you, or they say nasty things, or they say that you know you didn't give them what they wanted, or whatever it is. And unfortunately, we have to sometimes go through those experiences, you guys. But you have to use those experiences and say, okay, how can I learn from it? How can I become a better leader, a better coach, whatever, and move forward, okay? Because every time you have one of those situations, that helps you become a better coach to create those lifers, okay? Believe me, I've had a lot of those situations, unfortunately. And, you know, I've created my lifers solely on social media. I mean, 99% of my team, I see Shannon on here, 99% um, of my team are across the USA and Canada, and I've met them all through mostly Facebook, you know, a little bit of Instagram, but Facebook. And I know that a lot of you guys do that as well because social media makes it so that you can grow your business faster um, instead of having to do a lot of face-to-face uh, -face type stuff, okay? So while you're going to have people do that, okay, our, chance, or our goal is to lower the percentage of people who are unfollowing you or blocking you or whatever, okay? So on our journey with individuals, okay, it starts on social media. So whether you're posting on Facebook, like you have a Facebook profile page, I know a lot of people run their business on their Facebook profile page, a like page, Snapchat's the next biggest thing, Instagram, Instagram, they've started to make some changes that are really cool. I don't know if you guys have noticed on uh, Instagram, but you can like go back and like part people's comments or reply right back to them like Facebook. So Facebook's going to continue to make those uh, changes so that's easier for us to connect with people on there. Okay. Um, but you're going to have to make sure that you're sharing the value. So you guys are diamond above coaches. Okay. So whether you got there with discount coaches or with team builders or whatever, we have to always make sure that we're sharing the value. And even at the point seven and a half years into my business, I've had to continuously go back and say, am I providing value? Am I someone who people would want to follow and to continue to follow? Or am I getting wrapped up in comparing myself to other coaches, what other coaches are doing, um, and you know, getting overwhelmed and thinking that I don't have something to offer? Because every single person on here, you know, I see a few people who I personally know, others not so much, but I know every single person has something to offer, okay? And you were put on this earth, you were um, given this opportunity to run this business for a reason, whether it's to provide value through a health type thing like I do, or maybe you're coming, you know, off of um, 
an addiction or you know whatever it is you guys we all have value to give people okay so I might get some eye rolls when I say that because it's like we hear value 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 all the time but it's true you guys maybe some of you guys are shifting in your chair right now and you're like you know what yeah my social media kind of sucks and that's what I had to do back in October okay October 2016 you guys I've been a coach since 2009 in October of 2016 I had to sit down and say Something's not working, okay? Something is not working with my business because I'm having to work so hard to have people comment and like on my stuff. And something's not clicking. I see some heads shaking like that. Maybe you're at the point, you guys, and you're like saying, oh, screw Facebook, right? We always go back to that, oh, screw Facebook. Facebook's messing things up. You guys, no, we gotta, we gotta own it, okay? We gotta own it and say, not always Facebook if you're providing value and you're staying away from those salesy type posts which can be really uncomfortable for us to put up but it seems to be what we mostly put up then we're going to start having people comment on our stuff okay if we can continue to provide that value get people into your inbox as opposed to having to put up those challenge group posts okay so that's where I want you guys to think okay you you have to think about what value you have to give, and I'm gonna kind of help you unfold that value, okay? So tip number one, become a self-proclaimed expert on something, okay? So I think a lot of people, like I said, think that they don't have value to give, and a lot of people see, okay, well, Meg's a nutritionist, so that's why she has value. When really, you know, you guys, like you can create value in whatever you have to give people, okay? So I want you guys to think about something, okay? Whether it be um, carb cycling, intermittent fasting, um, emotional eating, what's the thing that Shalane's talking about right now? Uh, the metabolism diet, I think that's what she calls it. Um, is anyone else signed up for that? I like, as soon as Shalene Johnson said something, you know, as soon as she says anything, I'm like, in. But I signed up and I'm like, shoot, <laughs> I don't know what I'm doing. But anyways, um, you have to think of something that you feel excited about. I have some coaches who um, have connected it to family and being more present in their family. It doesn't have to be weight loss, nutrition, fitness-based type of stuff, you guys. It has to be something that you're passionate about, okay? Because when you're passionate about it, then you're gonna wanna continue to post about it, okay? And your excitement is gonna come through in your posts, okay? So for me, I think a lot of people are like, I don't know who my residency is. I'm a huge thyroid expert, okay? Self-proclaimed expert. And I have to make sure I say self-proclaimed. While I have my degree in nutrition, you know, I don't, um, I'm not part of the FDA, so I'm a self-proclaimed expert, and I have worked to become that self-proclaimed expert because I have thyroid issues, okay? So think of something that maybe you have, PCOS, endometriosis, you know, whatever. The things that we always try to hide because we're like, oh, that's not part of health and fitness. That's the thing you want to connect with, okay? Because that's what other people are looking for, okay? So figure out the value topic that you want to do, okay? I want you to right now write one to two things down, okay? And if you want to do three, four, five, ten, go for it, okay? But one to two things that you're really excited about, okay? And so write those two things down, okay? And I want you to, um, tonight, so today is what, Tuesday? Today's Tuesday. Tonight, don't do it like right now, okay? Do it tonight because most people are on Facebook tonight, okay? And I better see like all these posts in my newsfeed, okay? Because I did a type of training like this for Janelle and for my team and it made me so excited to see these posts go up. Um, and I will tell you that I've gotten messages from coaches who have done this to a T and they're like, oh my God, I'm getting responses like I've never gotten. Okay, so trust me. When I know what I'm talking about, I know what I'm talking about. Other times, not so much. So just trust me, okay? So you're gonna put up a post, okay, tonight, and you're gonna ask your followers, hey guys, I wanna make sure that I'm providing value for you, and I'm gonna create a free group, okay, that is either about X or Z, okay? So pick two things. Say you're saying carb cycling or emotional eating. What would you like to hear more about, okay? Don't take that word for word because the way that Facebook does it, you guys, is that if you put word for word what I just said, then it's actually going to work against you. So put your personality into it. Okay, I see Erin, I see Kelly, I see Renee. Put your personality into that post, okay? That way your friends are like, 
Yeah, I see Charlotte has a post about wanting to help me with my intermittent fasting, and I've actually thought about doing that, okay, or whatever it is, okay? So I want that to go up tonight, okay? All righty. Tip number two. Well, actually, it's a part of tip number one. After you put that post up, okay, I want you to let it marinate for a little bit, okay? So say you put it up at like 9 p.m. EST, okay, and you're like, don't post a run, okay? But you want to look and see what people are commenting. Maybe they're saying A, B, A, B, A, B, okay? And you're like, well, it looks like they want to hear both. At that point, okay, when you see that it's kind of a mixture, go with what you feel more passionate about. If you're like, you know, I really want to do carb cycling, then do carb cycling, okay? And then you're going to start researching that topic. Okay, there's so many resources out there, you guys. When I became, you know, a self-proclaimed thyroid expert, I have like six books, and I haven't gotten through all of them. I kind of rotate through them, but I have them all set up here so that when I'm wanting to put a value-type post, I read my book. I highlight something that I learned, and then I put it up as a post. Okay, so it's just like when you're sharing little things from personal development. Now you're doing it on this topic. Okay, now say you put the post up, no one comments, no one likes. I've been there, you guys. I have been there, and you're like, well, that flopped. Avoid the I suck phase, okay? Because usually if we put a post up and no one comments or likes, we're like, oh my God, I'm a failure. Meg told me to do this, and no one commented. No, no, no. It's either the timing, the day, or maybe the topics, okay? So try it again. Try it during the day. Just because I said nighttime, Maybe your followers are more on Facebook during the day, and that's okay. Try it again. If you still get crickets, maybe you should try two different topics, okay? This is not the end-all be-all. Keep trying it until you find one that sticks, okay? Um, and then, so once you do that, you guys, you're gonna start, and this is where tip number two comes in, okay? So you have that topic, okay? You're going to make this topic the main focus of your post on your page, okay? So 80% of your content should now be focused on this topic. So they say that you're doing carb cycling. Okay, I know Chris Powell has an awesome book. It's kind of old, but he has an awesome book about carb cycling. Okay, and you go on Amazon, you order it, you start reading it, and you're like, okay, cool. I can, I can totally nail this, okay? Start creating some cute graphics for it. Start sharing why you're excited about it. 80% of your um, post should be about that topic, okay? And the reason I say 80% is because 100% is like really overwhelming. And sometimes we just need a little bit of wiggle room to, you know, post our sweaty selfies because we're coaches or family stuff or coaching opportunity type posts, okay? So 20% can be kind of, you know, whatever you want it to be. And if you guys go on to my social media, you know, I run everything on my like page, my Pesinski, you'll see 80% of my posts are focused on, I call it symptom relief but it's, it's thyroid stuff, okay? So you can see kind of how I do it. Um, but you want to now start planning a free group on this topic, okay? So this is the connected to the social media. So 80% of your posts are gonna be focused on this topic, and now you're gonna start planning and promoting a free group on this. So for me, when I did it, I put my post up and said it's completely free to join a five-day healthy thyroid group. Um, and so I had people join this group and I ran it for five days. So your goal is to run it for five days, put people in there. So what do you do in that group? It's totally up to you guys, okay? What I personally do is day one, I focus on nutrition, okay? Day two, I focus on fitness, okay? So um, however it's related to you, if you're doing carb cycling, maybe coming up with hit type workouts or talking about turbo fire or whatever, the, the type of workouts that you've seen your research say you should be doing, okay? For me, with thyroid stuff, we gotta slow down. So a big focus of mine is retraining people's brains to know that they don't have to go all out in order to see results, okay? Um, Wednesday, one day, Wednesday we talk about uh, stress relief, okay? So Wednesday, talk about the stress relieving techniques that I use to keep my thyroid healthy. Thursday is supplements, okay, I share with them why I personally drink Shakeology, make sure you put a disclaimer if you talk about Shakeology, um, as well as other supplements that I would suggest they take, okay? Friday is a recap day, so Friday we go over and we say, okay, how can you apply this to your life, okay? And that's when I kind of slide in the fact 
that I'm going to be running a 90 day group. Now your days don't have to be 90 days. Okay. A lot of coaches get overwhelmed thinking I have to run a group for 90 days. Start out with 21. Okay. You can do a 21 day group and that's your challenge group. Okay. That's your challenge group. As long as the group goes well and people are participating, um, that means that you have a good group right there. Okay. So here's where it's really key. Okay. So you post on that Friday post telling them, Hey, I'm opening up um, a group where I'm going to have five people work personally with me on this topic. Okay. And you reach out to the people who have participating, like you want a free group, right? We all do that. Um, and connect with them about that. Okay. And that's your challenge group that's focused on this topic. Okay. The other part of this that's key is in that post on Friday, you say, I've had so much fun with you guys. Would you be open to turning this into a support group for carp cycling or a support group for um, single mamas or whatever it is that you're doing, you guys? Okay. And when people say yes, that's go time. Okay. That means you have something that you can continue to grow. Okay. So hopefully that makes sense. You have a five day group, and then at the end, you ask if you can turn it into a giant giant group pretty much. Now, every single month, you guys, so you can look at your calendar. I know I have a lot of organized people on here. If you're diamond and above, you're decently organized. I'm surprisingly not organized at all, but I am when it comes to this business. So what I do is the second Monday of every month, okay? Yours does not have to be the second Monday of every month. I have a five-day free group set up in that same group, you guys, the same exact group that I had set up, okay? So I don't start a new group. I have that same group. I keep all of the people in there. I delete my posts, okay, from the five days, okay? So when you rerun that group every month, you use those same posts. Now, as you learn, you guys can add stuff to it. It's not the end all be all that you're like, I have to copy paste, copy paste. As you continue to be that self-expert and research this topic, you guys, you're gonna learn so much. Like stuff that I learned like back in 2014 that I've been using and I've continued to educate myself. I'm like, oh, all right, maybe that's not so right anymore, you know, because things change or you're like, oh, this is an amazing resource. I'm going to add that into my group, okay? You just keep improving it. You run it for five days, okay? And you continue to add people into this funnel, okay, into this group, okay? Does that make sense? The other part of the social media work, it's a little um, – it's fun, okay, is that you're going to slide in whatever topic you're talking about in this group into your posts on Facebook three to four times a week, you guys. So not every single post, but it's little plugs for your group, okay? So if you notice, I'm very strategic in my posts and I'll say, I just connected with my symptom relief support group, or I'm so excited that I have four spots left in my symptom relief group or whatever, because that's my challenge group as well as my support group. And I just keep plugging it in. Because what happens, you guys, is as you continue to be that self-expert and you start saying small call to actions like that that are not salesy, okay, it's kind of, um, what's the word? It's like you're, you're telling them, but you're not telling them. I can't think of the word for that. <laughs> but you have people um, thinking, Oh, Shannon's running an emotional eating group. Okay. And you start getting messages in your new, in your uh, inbox, you guys, that you didn't have to reach out to people. Now, here's the thing, you guys, it's going to take some time. Okay. You start applying this stuff. It's not going to happen in a week. I started doing this back in October. Okay. When I was like, oh, I feel like I'm back at square one in my business. I need to figure this out. Started in October. Okay. And around December is when it really started picking up mid December. Okay, so give yourself some time. It might take you two months, it might take you six months, but know that the payoff is worth it. Okay, it is so, so worth it to stay consistent with this. Okay, um, let me make sure that I covered everything with that. Okay, the last thing for your social media. Okay, the last thing for your social media, well, two things. The one is that your challenge groups. Okay, so we're all doing challenge group invite posts probably. Now your challenge group invite posts are going to be geared towards this topic. Okay, so say that you're doing emotional eating. You're going to slide in the fact that this is going to be an emotional eating type group. Now, I get people who get really nervous that are like, isn't that going to be too narrow? 
Like, am I still going to be able to help other people? You're still going to have other people come to you that don't need emotional eating, but they're just inspired by you. Okay. I have people who are like, I don't have thyroid issues, but I still want to help, like get help from you because you're inspiring me a lot. Okay. So you're not just going to be stuck to just working with these people. I promise you. Okay. So that's the first thing. The last thing is going live. Now you guys probably are already going live. If you're not, you should probably start doing it. But I'd say once a week, okay? And as you're doing your research, I have so many books over here. I grab one of my books, I read it, I find something that I'm like, oh, yeah, that's awesome on thyroid health, okay? And I start connecting to that, okay? And I go live on it, okay? And it's scary. It's, it's very scary to go live on something that you just learned about, but people are going to take from that video. And the more comfortable that you get doing it, the more... Um, Often that you do it, people are going to start sharing your videos. People are going to start um, going back to your videos. You can reference your videos to people who ask you a question. That way you can save time. And it picks up how many people are seeing stuff in your, on your page. Because Facebook is big into the video, you guys. It, they still are, okay? It's been probably a year or so since they've been doing live videos. And maybe some of you guys have like stomped your feet and said, I'm not doing it. Okay, I was one of those people. I was like, I don't feel comfortable. I rarely have makeup on. Okay, I rarely have my hair actually washed. I don't wanna do it. And if you go on to my live videos, you'll see, I rarely have my hair done. I rarely have makeup. It's usually after I worked out and I have a screaming baby in the background, okay? And that's what people wanna see. Okay, you don't have to be perfect, okay? But just force yourself once a week to do that. Okay, tip number three, strengthen the relationships and trust through your social media. Okay, so now we are wrapping back into that lifer, okay? So you're providing that value. You're sharing that you're an uh, expert in this topic, okay? And people are like, yeah, okay, I wanna come back to Angela because she's talking about whatever, okay? And you've been so consistent, okay? That's the key, you gotta be so consistent. Anything in this business, you guys, you have to be consistent for a couple months before you start seeing it. Unfortunately, we like that instant gratification, but with this, especially this, you gotta be so consistent, okay? So they're starting to trust you. They're seeing your heart. They're seeing that you're passionate about this. You're, they're seeing that you're helping people with this, okay? Now, you're gonna make sure that two to three times, okay, and, and this seems so simple, you guys, but I see so many coaches that don't do it, and I was overlooking it too, okay? Two to three times per week, you're gonna go back through your posts, okay? And you are going to comment and love on people. Not just thank you, heart, smiley face. You're going to comment back to them and say, oh my gosh, thank you so much for taking the time to comment on my post of, you know, about carb cycling. Have you ever thought about it, okay? Or whatever, okay? Don't overthink it, you guys. That's where we get stuck. Don't overthink it, just reach back to the person in a comment, okay? Okay, two to three times per week, go back and look at that. Now, one to two times per week, you're gonna go back and look at who has liked and comments on your post and turn it into a message. If you guys watched The Surge, I hope you guys all watched The Surge, it was amazing on Friday. I think her name was Tanya, Tan, Tanya Jean. She did an amazing, amazing job giving tips and suggestions on this, actually. And uh, it's a big part, you guys, to just go back and not sell them, okay? Not go in and be like, have you ever thought about my challenge group? Or have you ever thought about coaching? That is like the one thing that's like nails on the chalkboard to me, okay? I hate cold market invites. If they work for you, you must be doing something right. Because for me, when I immediately get a cold message invite from someone else, I'm like, boo! And I'm even in a, I'm a, in a business like this, okay? It just makes me feel icky. I hate it. I'm like, they didn't even take any time to get to know me, okay? So if you can, this is where you're not inviting people, okay? You're just adding to your network, basically, okay? You're just building those relationships. Because when you are strengthening those relationships through your comments and through personal messages, when you put up your challenge group invite posts, okay, or you put up a coaching post, they feel connected to you guys, okay? And they're like, I was just talking to Megan a message. This works out perfectly. I, I feel like I already know her. I totally trust her, okay? So it's strengthening that relationship. I know that's a dumb moment, you guys, but like I said, a lot of coaches don't do that, and it's a huge opportunity for them to continue to strengthen that relationship, okay? Now, tip number four. Once they sign up, that's where the relationship really begins, okay? So 
maybe some of us are in that area where we're like, successful points, successful points, successful points. I got to get it. I want to pay off my trip next year or my coach has a goal for me or what. I guess it's team cup month, right? And we're like, yes, come on. Let's get people signed up. Okay. And then sometimes, and I'm totally guilty of this. I look back, you know, a couple of years ago and I was like, some people fell through the cracks and it was my fault that I didn't have a chance to strengthen that relationship with your challenge groups. Okay. The challenge groups is where the magic begins. You guys, that's where the relationship really blossoms. Okay. And I know you guys all have big goals. You're diamond and above. So as you're adding this on, you know, adding challengers into your life as well as trying to help your team, can be a little bit of a juggling act, okay? Who has ever felt really overwhelmed and stressed? Because you're like, I don't know how I can physically keep up with all of these people, okay? And I see my coach do it, and she must be superwoman, and I must be sucking at life because I can't do it, okay? You have to have a strategy. You have to have a plan, you guys, in order to keep yourself sane, okay? So for me, um, something that I have been able to do to help me keep a little bit of control on my life, okay, is that I have it set up so that my challengers feel the love for me without me getting overwhelmed, okay? So the first thing is that I have an entry survey, okay, an entry survey, and if it lets me, I'll put it in the comments over there so you guys can see it. Just don't send it to your challengers because then I'm going to get their information, <laughs> but an entry survey that's super simple, you guys. You might already have one, okay? But this was a step that I wasn't doing. And as soon as they buy that challenge back, I say, awesome. I want to make sure that I'm the best coach for you and that I'm helping you reach your goals, okay? I know you told me that you want to do X, Y, and Z, but I need a little bit of a deeper um, answer to that, okay? And so I have them share their goals. I have them share what they struggle with. I have them tell me what they want me to do when they stop checking in, okay? Because it happens to us all, you guys. You might have a challenger who is crushing it and all of a sudden it's like, Whoop, she disappears. And you're like, oh, I don't know what to do. And you reach out to her, you reach out to her, she reach out to her and she doesn't respond. And you're like, well, that sucks. You know, I don't know what to do. If you have this conversation at the beginning of that relationship, then you know, maybe Sarah just needs a couple weeks off without hearing from anyone. And then she's self-motivated, so she'll hop back in when she's ready, okay? Or maybe it's Stacy who literally needs you to call her, okay? And tell her, hey, I'm here for you. I love you. I'm here to help you get back on, okay? So you need that at the beginning of the, con or the, the relationship, okay? Before they even get into the challenge groups. Then I don't schedule posts in my group. <gasps> oh my God, I don't schedule posts in my group, okay? I know a lot of people, we think like it's more efficient to post and, and schedule everything. I get it. I used to be one of those coaches, but for my personality, okay, let me back up for a second. Maybe you're someone who does really well in scheduling and you're like, I'm still very present in my group. It's saving me time. I'm good to go. Don't change it just because I'm telling you to. For me, what I noticed happened is when I scheduled posts, I checked out, okay? My challengers felt that I was checked out. Yeah, maybe I commented and liked in the group and you know, I posted like I was a challenger, but the love and that strong connection wasn't there. So I never schedule my posts. It's on my to-do list. One of the very first things to do is to check into my challenge groups, love on them, help them, okay? So I never schedule it. You gotta find what works for you guys, okay? Um, the other thing I do is, <laughs> I hope you guys are using the Challenge Tracker app. I know a lot of coaches are like, but I like Facebook. I was the same way, you guys, and they asked me to speak at Summit on the topic of challenge groups. And my um, partner was like, I got Facebook. And I'm like, shoot, I gotta cover Challenge Trackers. I don't know how to do Challenge Tracker. I had to force myself to, talk, or to learn Challenge Tracker, and now I'm obsessed, you guys. Because not only does it like keep things so organized for you, but you can see immediately when someone stops checking in, okay? You don't have to go through and say, all right, let me put this on Excel, who hasn't, or have your assistant do it, your assistant should be doing something else, okay? On the Challenge Tracker app, I can immediately go in and be like, oh, April didn't check in for the last three days. Let me reach out to her. And it lets you message her, okay? And the message, they can either respond back as a text message or they can respond back as an email, okay? So obviously make sure you save them in your phone where you're like, okay, I know who that is. But it helps you connect with them um, you know, as soon as they start dropping out, 
Okay. Um, you can also see them, you know, track their results in there too. So, so easy, guys. If you're not on the challenge tracker, but I schedule weekly, okay, to check in on them. Okay, and I have another survey, which I can share with you guys as well, that I got from Erin Turner. Um, just started implementing this, but it talks about their weekly results for the last week. So instead of me having to go back and say, okay, let me find their last results. Let me add this up. Are you guys stuck in that or you have your assistant do it and you're like, that's just so, it takes so much time. I have them actually figure out their results for me. Okay, so I can see their week re weekly results. I can see what they struggled with that week, okay? And I can see, okay, well, six out of the 10 people struggled with meal planning. We need to focus on meal planning in the group, okay? So if you're not doing the challenge tracker, make sure you do it, okay? But I have the weekly, you know, the beginning um, survey and then the weekly check-in survey, okay? The last thing, okay, is that you wanna make sure in your challenge groups, if they come in at, you know, for emotional eating, that you are weaving in emotional eating to whatever your challenge groups are usually like. So for me, okay, I'm gonna give you guys the nitty gritty. I do, in my symptom relief group, we do three week yoga retreat, okay? We do three week yoga retreat, cut out gluten, cut out dairy, but still stick to the containers for three weeks, okay? And then after that, we add gluten and dairy back in to see how they respond, and I have them go through 21 day fix, and then 21 day fix again, okay? So that's literally my 90 day group, <clears throat> but I've created resources that they can use, okay? So how do you know when something has gluten in it, okay? So many resources out there, you guys. I literally just went and researched it, okay? How do you know if your body's inflamed? Researched it. You know, what vitamins do people with thyroid issues need? Researched it, okay? Go in and research the stuff that you think people would benefit from and weave it into your beach body stuff because then you become that self-proclaimed expert and your challenge groups follow suit. Okay, last topic, last topic. Okay, realize that you're gonna not mesh with every single person you talk to, okay? Like I said, I am a self-pleaser, and I actually ran into someone yesterday that, oh, she got, she got under my skin, but I was such a self-pleaser, and then I was like, even after I knew I wasn't in the wrong, I was like talking to my husband, I'm like, Tell me I didn't do something wrong. Tell, tell me I didn't do something wrong, okay? She's, okay, basically she was working with another coach and she went in my group and she got really mad at me that I wouldn't let her in the group. I'm like, I'm sorry, okay? Because that's, I run my business with integrity, I don't do that. So um, I, I sat for an hour stressing out about it, okay? And I remembered, shoot, I gotta talk on this topic. You've gotta remember, you're not gonna mesh with everyone, you guys. There's gonna be people, like I said, that just, you're not their cup of tea. Okay, they think that you're annoying or they think that whatever, whatever they say, okay? When it comes down to it, as long as your heart is in the right place and you're focused on helping other people, that is all that matters, you guys. That is all that matters, okay? Because your paycheck in this business is a direct reflection of how many people you're helping, okay? And when you are helping people and you are putting, you know, let me love on as many people as I possibly can, Unfortunately, sometimes you're going to have people that don't agree, okay? So just know that's okay, okay? That's completely okay. And I think that's it, you guys. Let me find these because I think it'll let me – actually, it might take me a second to do this. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to send the Superstar Diamonds, okay, that uh, – you're all on here from. I'm gonna put these resources into the Superstar Diamond group um, with my survey as well as I guess both surveys so that you guys can see it. And let me make sure that I didn't miss anything on here. Let's see. Yeah, Heather, you absolutely can join my group. If you type in, I think if you type in health, healthy thyroid support, let me see. The, the group is done. Large. Let me see. It actually might be connected to my Instagram if that's easier. Let's see. Thyroid support group. It's called thyroid support group. Whoa, 44 people want to join it. <laughs> thyroid support group, okay? And I let coaches in there. I let other people's customers in there. I let whoever the heck wants to go in that group, you guys, because that's not where I like and like funneling people out of, okay? It's more of where I'm building my value and my trust, and then if people wanna work with me, awesome. Okay, so 
I think that's it, you guys. Like I said, I like to keep it short and sweet. I think I went like 32 minutes. I'm sorry. But I hope you guys got something out of this. Um, I loved chatting with you. I'm very passionate about this topic because I go back to Gary Vanderchuk at Summit and how he said that he went on to other coaches' pages and said that he didn't see any value being given. Okay, and I was one of those coaches. <clears throat> I was one of those coaches that did a sweaty selfie and, you know, a Shakeology picture and all that stuff. And I was like, man, I don't have any value and my team is gonna follow suit. Okay, so you start sharing value and your team is going to follow suit. Okay, guys, have a wonderful Tuesday. It's my husband's birthday, so now I need to go be um, wife. <laughs> so I will talk to you guys later.